Uh, let's get to it. Odo Beckham Jr. officially waived yesterday by the Cleveland Browns. The Giants will not be claiming him on waivers. They said so yesterday. That just would have been a, oh my gosh. a beautiful right? development. A spite claim of Odo Beckham Jr. on waivers. We didn't sign him to trade him. We signed him to trade him and then claim him on waivers when he was cut by the Browns. That would have been the Dave Gettleman quote. The Lions aren't going to claim him. They've got dibs. But one team that did not say no, didn't say yes, but mm, nah. here's Pete Carroll, Seahawks coach. His team's got the cap space. Let's hear what he had to say about OBJ. Do you intend to claim Odell Beckham Jr. and Adam be team? Uh, you'll have to wait and see how we how this all goes. But um, at this time, um, you know, I, I don't know. I've been on the practice field. I don't know what's going on with any. As you as you would think, um, we're aware of what's going on, and we've been involved to, to understand it and competing to to know what's happening. Um, and uh, we'll let you know as it, as it all happens. I gotta wait. So I didn't say yes or I didn't say no, but that's just because you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. Ha 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 ha. Look. He, I said this the other night. He wants to play for the Seahawks. And of all the contenders, although it's hard to call the Seahawks yeah, contenders at 3-5, right. they're getting Russell Wilson back. Their schedule is not overly daunting down the stretch. We'll talk. I think we're talking more about, yeah, we're talking more about Russell Wilson later. But he wants to play for Seattle. And they do, of all the con- non-contenders who have cap space, Contenders, non-contenders, whatever. They're the best team. Let me put it that way. They're the best team that has the cap space. And they could easily absorb the $7.25 million for the rest of the year. And we'll find out. Sometime after 4 p.m. Eastern, we'll find out if anyone claimed him. We'll probably find out how many total teams claimed him, although they don't release that information like they used to. They can leak it to their in-house media conglomerate so we can all find out how many teams wanted OBJ. I put the over-under yesterday at one and a half and took the over. I think there's going to be at least two waiver claims for Odo Beckham Jr. You I think just, there I will just, be? I think that, look, there's 31 teams yeah, out there. Right. I mean, come on. The guy, the guy has shown in the past how good he is capable of being. Sure. There's plenty of teams with cap space to burn, and this is an entertainment business. You bring this guy to town, you're going to sell some jerseys right out of the gates. You're going to attract some attention for your team. You're going to maybe get some more asses in the seats, and this is the time of year where the asses start to do other things on Sunday afternoons, frankly. Uh, So, yeah, I could see at least two teams saying we're going to give this a shot. I, 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 I'll be interested to see there. I, I lean a little towards the under part of that one there just because I, I just feel like, hey, there's a reputation with OBJ, and I, I got to feel like teams you – know, you better know. I guess what I'm saying is if you're going to, like, put a claim in, you know, on waivers for Odell Beckham Jr., you better have a, good, a feel that he's willing to play for your football team because that, 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 to me, he's, I think, got to the point of his career where he's probably like – I've had enough. I'm going somewhere where I'm set up for success and going to, you know, do this his way. Uh, at least that's the way it looks a little bit here. Uh, but but the Seattle thing, Mike, is interesting to me. It really is. You know, first off, I look at Seattle and go, out of all their problems, I don't look at wide receiver as being the problem. I don't. They have other problems. I'd go, well, that makes sense to address. Offensive line, maybe corner. You know, maybe another defensive lineman, sure. Wide receiver? I mean, Mike, uh, we, we made, we've been making fun of them for the fact that it's like they don't know they have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf on their team. I mean, they have a hard time getting them the football. You know, let alone, you know, they don't throw the ball a lot. And that's like the next part of this I wanted to bring up is like, is Seattle going to change the way they play? That's where I would tell Odell Beckham Jr. Like, be careful. They want to hey, run the ball hey, and play may, defense. May, Hey, you don't know how involved Russell Wilson is or isn't in this. I know, Maybe you're this right. this is his last ditch. Maybe this is his, hey, if you want to keep me beyond this season, this is what you have to do. Maybe. Maybe, This Mike, is what maybe. you need to do. Maybe maybe Pete Carroll came to the, the realization after that game they lost uh, a few weeks ago where he kind of said, like, man, Russell Wilson. Yeah, maybe that's where he came to it. Maybe they are going to open it up. They need to do something. I know that. And the other thing, though, Dell is that I think you, we've talked about this a little, like, Seattle's scary too. I know it's maybe going to be a one-year thing, but if you're looking for a future there, you know I think we both agree Russell Wilson's future in Seattle to me is very dicey, very from anybody you listen to that he's talked to last off season. So 
you line those things up, I, that's to me where I'm a little surprised with the Seahawks conversation. But, but you know, I remember we had the conversation in the aftermath of the Seahawks losing at home to the Saints. Right. And Pete Carroll saying, basically, I wouldn't be here if yeah. we didn't have Russell right. Wilson. He, he had his epiphany. Right of how important it is to him and his career and his accomplishments that he's had Russell Wilson. So maybe this is now the moment where they're finally going. They've had two weeks to get it ready. Run the offense through Russell Wilson. We've been saying that for the past couple of years. It's not like Kansas City and Mahomes. It's not like Buffalo and Josh Allen. They don't run the offense through Russell Wilson. They wait until seven minutes left in the game. And, you know, they're, they're, they're in a tough spot and, Russell, can you bail us out? As After they do the grind it out, grind it out, grind it out, ground and pound, try to win that way, then Russell, save us if we're losing. If we're working, it's great. If we're winning, it's great. If we're losing, then we need you. Maybe maybe that really was a moment where maybe. Pete Carroll woke up to what he needs to do with his quarterback. And, and look, against the Jaguars, a lot of footballs thrown too. Yeah, they tried to get Tyler those guys the ball. Yeah, they yeah. finally did. Exactly right. And, of course, it, it led to some big plays, and it changes their team. So, uh, I, again, for the team that they are, I, I think we would both look at them and go, wait, they're not going to win with their defense this year. That's not going to happen. They're not going to get to the playoffs and make a playoff run because of their defense. That's not going to happen because of their run game. Oh, okay, that's right. You have a superstar quarterback and two superstar receivers. You better start riding them. That's that's to me where Seattle drops the ball, and uh, I'm going to be interested to see if they make this adjustment here as as Russell gets back and gets healthy. So, look, nothing Pete Carroll said takes any steam out of this possibility that it's going to be right. the Seahawks, not just signing him as a free agent, but claiming the contract on waivers because the Seahawks are in a pretty good position at three and five. It's not like they, you know, they, they're one of the last ones where it doesn't matter. There may be some teams with a better record than them that would be interested, and uh, maybe one of those teams, you know, would move some money around to try to create the cap space, even if they don't currently have it, and then make that waiver claim, and they have him. So uh, we'll keep an eye on on that. I I uh, I think that it would be a sign that Russell is using his voice. They're listening to him, yeah, and they're willing to give him something he wants, almost like Randall Cobb coming to Green Bay. They're willing to give Russell Wilson something as a gesture, as a token, as a capitulation that would hopefully get him to choose to stay because Pete Carroll got a glimpse for a few weeks of what life would have been like over the last decade without Russell Wilson. And that it may have been like a Christmas Carol type thing. And I do not intend that pun at all. It just happens to work. You know, Marley's ghost came in the form of Geno Smith, and that that caused Pete Carroll to uh, to change very dramatically his attitude on how he's going to run his football team. I don't think we can rule that out. No, I, I'm with you. I don't think you can rule that out either. He might have had that epiphany there to finally go, wait, I, I don't know what I think. We're not the Legion of Boom. We're not the team that we were seven years ago. Why am I still trying to play that way? And maybe he did come to that realization, and maybe he realizes his future is a little bit, you know, stapled to, to Russell Wilson and his future with the football team, too. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.